recording is prepared. We are online, and I guess we may start. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm still and honored to welcome all of the audience on the joint event of Think Tank Adastra, Ukrainian Think Tank, and Gulf Research Center, uh, Think Tank from Saudi Arabia with its offices in Jeddah in Geneva, at a joint conference devoted to Ukrainian-Saudi relations. We are going to discuss much of the issues, political and economic one today. And I am going to present myself and present our highly esteemed speakers. My name is Viktor Kravatsky. I am CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Ukrainian Think Tank at Astra. With us also is uh, here only the ambassador, His Excellency, Ambassador Extraordinary Plenipotentiary of Ukraine to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Mr. Vahrushev Vadim. We'll be joining, we will be waiting for his Saudi counterpart to join us at any minute, His Excellency Mohammed bin Sulman Mohammed Al Mamashe, uh, Ambassador Extraordinary of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, to Ukraine. We also featured in Dr. Abdulaziz Zaghe, Chairman of the Gulf Research Center, Dr. Uh, Dr. John Sfakiakis. Program Director and Economic uh, Research and Chief Economist, Dr. Christian Koch, Director of Research and Health uh, Research Center, uh, Irina Zapoliska, Senior Fellow of Adesta. Uh, I'm still to welcome all of you, and I am I will pass the floor to give the keynote speech to Mr. Vadim. Mr. Vadim, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, as you know, Ukraine considers Saudi Arabia uh, as one of the leaders of the Muslim world with a significant influence on a lot of global processes. It's our important and promising partner in, very, uh, in various uh, areas of bilateral relations. Saudi Arabia, one of our major partners for trade and economy in the Middle East and the Gulf. In 2020, trade exchange between Ukraine and Saudi Arabia uh, amounted more than uh, $820 million. Uh, as Ukrainian export achieved uh, approximately $719 million and Saudi imports $102 million. Uh, this is not figures. We are not satisfied with this uh, level of trade and economic relations because uh, we see many perspectives for, uh, for further expansion and diversification of our trade ties. Because our two countries don't have any political problems in our relations, first of all. Secondly, Saudi Arabia and Ukraine uh, are witnessing uh, the period of transformation, very huge, big transformation. In Saudi Arabia, as you know, this is Saudi Vision uh, 2030 transformation plan of the kingdom, which must uh, uh, exchange Saudi Arabia from oil, can oil country to uh, huge economy uh, grounded for, uh, on non-oil production. During uh, next uh, 10 years, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, will be in, in the top of world economies. In Ukraine as well, uh, you see many changes uh, dedicated to business activity, to investment activity. And uh, as you know, uh, in, uh, from 2019, uh, we provided new legislation uh, for protection of investment, a new legislation land market, new legislation of uh, concession, which uh, simplify uh, the business activity for our foreign partners. And uh, as a result, since 2019, uh, Ukraine has moved up on seventh position in the World Bank doing business report, 2020 report, ranking 64. It's approximately the same place which occupies Saudi Arabia. And uh, with many proposals for investment in Ukraine, investments in Ukraine, with uh, Ukraine uh, launching the program of large scale privatization, uh, everything, uh, everything uh, is creating uh, uh, wonderful possibilities for Saudi business to come to our market. We offer to Saudi side an opportunity for investment in such sectors as uh, agri-food, energy, oil and gas, and renewable energy, aircraft, shipbuilding, tourism, innovation, technologies, uh, IT, of course, infrastructure, this is, I mean, seaports, airports, and roads, 
and industrialization. And uh, the acquisition uh, of Ukrainian agricultural holding company MRIA by the Saudi agricultural list of investment company Salik in 2018 uh, not only resulted into a significant uh, widening of Ukraine's participation in ensuring, ensuring food security of Saudi Arabia, but proved growing confidence of foreign, in particular Saudi, reputable investors in its economy and investment climate. U Ukraine declared not once that it's ready to enhance its role as a guarantor of food security of Saudi Arabia. And joint production of multi-purpose transport aircraft and on uh, 132D in 2016-2017 visually demonstrated uh, in the eyes of the whole world our state's ability to create high-tech products corresponding to the highest uh, international standards. Despite the COVID-19 restrictions, uh, Ukraine and Kingdom Saudi Arabia have succeeded in bringing their friendly nations closer because all our countries facilitated visa regime for Saudi Ukrainian nationals in 2019-2020. Uh, from, as you know, from August, uh, 1st of August 2020, uh, Saudi, Saudi citizens can visit Ukraine without visas. From uh, September 2019, uh, Ukrainian nationals can uh, obtain electronic Saudi visas and uh, very simply uh, can visit Saudi Arabia without any restrictions. They can obtain uh, multiple one year uh, visa to Saudi Arabia, uh, like uh, citizens of uh, other countries like U the US, uh, Canada. Switzerland, uh, Britain, uh, the European Union. Uh, in this year, exactly from 11th of June 2020, we are launching direct flights between Ukraine and Saudi Arabia, between our capitals. Now it will be uh, three times a week by company flying us, Saudi company flying us from Riyadh to Kiev, but we are. Uh, uh, looking for expansion of our air navigation between our countries. And I think maybe from July it will be uh, once a day. And not only from Riyadh, but also from Jidda to Ukraine. It's, uh, uh, it brings our uh, people closer to each other. And uh, briefly, uh, I think uh, 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 the expansion of business activity and contacts between our business circle and trade circle will uh, uh, we can achieve a uh, uh, very big volume of uh, mutual trade because uh, th uh, this volume that I mentioned it in 2018 about $800 million, it's nothing. I think our uh, volume must be not less than $2 billion, not less, because we have huge potential. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Mr. Vadim, for the keynote speech. I will remain to our audience, that's the Mr. Vadim Wachoshev, His Excellency, Honorary Extraordinary Ambassador of Ukraine uh, to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, was making the keynote speech. So, uh, before we proceed, before we start our speeches, I would like to add some words of mine as well. They would concern the general Ukrainian strategy towards the Middle East. Well, for Ukraine, it's now of the utmost importance to diversify foreign policy on international level to show the efforts that we are making on the international stage to build the reputation of the credible partner, to develop economic ties with the whole world, with developed countries, with the Middle East as well, and uh, the Asian strategies, or so-called private to Asia, the Asian strategies, uh, seeing on which Ukrainian Minister of Foreign Affairs is working right now, and one way only may support these efforts as we do. When it comes to the Middle East, Ukraine uh, is, I hope so, it's going like this, and it should to remain like this. Ukraine should 
promote a diversified multipolar policy in the Middle East. It not should be so limited by alliances as well. And I would also like to transmit this thought to all the spectaculars and viewers from the Saudi Arabia, the Ukraine is trying to uh, build bridges with multiple nations. It's no point in just concluding that Ukraine may be uh, supporting one side or another side. So Ukrainian president has visited Qatar and has visited United Arab Emirates. And I hope that the uh, Ukrainian president would also pay a visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as well. So for Ukrainian foreign policy, the key remains in multipolarity and in the ability to form alliances and partnerships with multiple, multiple uh, countries of the Middle East not to stick to one side. And that's where the Saudi Arabia comes from, comes in as so our partner in the Middle East. And we have a major, as Mr. Ambassador has men mentioned, we have immense scope for the first cooperation in Venice field in energy and uh, air uh, uh, construction uh, sphere in agriculture and so on and so on. And so, on. so the prospects are immense and for, for you from the ukrainian side and so from the saudi arabia side it is a willingness to do to deepen our relations and i hope that in the years to come ukraine will be able to build a more uh, comprehensive and more stable partnership with the kingdom of saudi arabia yes yeah, so it's what i wanted to add as a moderator now we are going to give the floor to our speakers and the, I'm going to give the photo of our first speaker. So the chairman of the Gulf Research Center, Dr. Abdulaziz Zaki, please, the floor is yours. Tell us your perspective, uh, your thoughts about political ties, economic ties, about ways how to accelerate relations. So all about uh, all about the things you may see on, please, the floor is yours. Good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon to your excellency and also to you, Victor, if I may say. It's a great pleasure to see such a cooperation between the, our two institutions from Ukraine and Saudi Arabia to start the first dialogue on the Saudi-Ukrainian relation. Although many think that it might be, it's just a, a, you know, a new relation in a way, uh, since it's not really uh, as old as some of the old East uh, West European country, but it's still, I think uh, it has a great start and uh, the ambassador have mentioned the size of the trade volume that exists today between both countries. I think uh, I, I share his uh, optimism to expand that sort of uh, uh, strong economic ties and relation because both has a potentiality. Uh, you know, we are interested a lot in a lot of the uh, uh, agricultural products from Ukraine and also there are uh, a possible military uh, industry cooperation between both sides on that field. So I think, and tourism definitely, of course, it's, it's of a great interest to uh, uh, both sides. I think having a direct flight that will start soon between uh, Ukraine and Saudi Arabia from Riyadh and Jeddah, this definitely will encourage tourism, will encourage trade, will really uh, bring much more stronger uh, and a better uh, relation. Um, definitely, there are uh, lots of need in Saudi Arabia that Ukraine can uh, uh, participate in the new, uh, you know, 2030 vision, uh, whether it is in the uh, uh, different field, industry, tourism, uh, uh, you know, and other, of course, uh, you know, future project that we are into it. But, you know, definitely the, the more there is a uh, a better understanding and a better, uh, you know, political and economic relation between both sides. This will help a lot. Uh, sometime a good relation between Saudi Arabia and other country that have uh, a conflict with the other one. It can help to ease it up and to bring a better understanding. Hopefully, in the best and the favor of the people, because normally Saudi, being a leader of the Islamic uh, world, it, you know, it, they play its role as. Uh, and honest, uh, you know, mediators to try to bring a better uh, understanding of Islam. We believe in the uh, uh, modernity. We believe in the moderate Islam, non-aggression, uh, uh, non, uh, 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 
one-sided, you know, looking at things. It, it means uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, fighting Saudi Arabia. They have been fighting terrorism and they have been fighting a lot of the extremism dimension. And that's a very important dimension. And they play a very strong role within the regional organization, whether it's a, the GCC country amongst the Gulf countries or within the um, Arab League or the OIC and also the United Nations. So having a good relation between Saudi Arabia and Ukraine will help at the international level and also at the regional level. I'm sure uh, the more we develop in the uh, business uh, development council uh, that can be between both sides can bring a lot into, in, into the table, uh, focusing in many of the different issues. Of course, different visits have taken place between different officials from both sides. And that's also have increased the, the you know, potentiality, uh, which is very good. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, this is a good start between both sides. And I think having a joint paper together uh, that both institution is, 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 is putting together, that will help and lay down the, uh, a good start and a good beginning. I'd like to thank you for organizing this, and I would like to thank all my colleagues, uh, Dr. Jonas Fakinakis, the economist, Dr. Christian Koch, the director of research, Dr. Oscar Zimilis, who is the director of our Geneva operation, and also all my other colleagues from Saudi Arabia, uh, Aline and Kinda, Leila, Ghassan, they're all being very keen as a researcher uh, to participate and to contribute to this effort is to, and, and really push for more understanding. And I'm sure both of us can share with our support and decision maker, you know, to, you know, to give them some thoughts in terms of the policy matters, what are the area that we believe, you know, could be more strengthening between both sides. Thank you. And maybe we'll give the floor to uh, Dr. Jones Fakinakis if he has anything in the economic that he would like to add, and then we move to the others. Thank you. Yes, thanks a lot, Dr. Albuziz, Dr. Albuziz, like a chairman of Gulf Research Center. So uh, I want to just add one moment. So as you mentioned, as the Saudi Arabia being the leader of the uh, Islamic world, uh, so the cooperation, there are like vast cooperation uh, possibilities on this track as well. So as you know, Ukraine has a Muslim uh, minority, Crimean Tatars, and seizing the opportunity would also like to think that was the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its position on the non recognizing uh, the annexation of Crimea. So Crimea is the home to the many of the Crimean Tatars, so the, the same mashab, uh, the same religion. And I guess on this way, cooperation with the Saudi Arabia as of the whole custody of few main uh, holy places of Muslim world is also for the utmost importance as for Ukrainian, Ukraine as a state and for Crimean Tatars as well. So uh, then I, I would like to give the floor to, to Mr. to Dr. to Dr. John Svakyankis. Please, Dr. John, share your vision of the economic thoughts of some how to develop the further cooperation. Then we will have Madam Irina, and then we will have Dr. Koch uh, speaking on our panel as well. Please, Dr. John. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Victor. Um, one of the difficulties uh, being uh, the third speaker, um, preceded by two very talented speakers. Uh, Dr. Abdelaziz and His Excellency the Ambassador, is that uh, you're left um, uh, without anything to say because everything has been said before you uh, in so many eloquent ways. Um, yes, I do believe that there is a lot of potential uh, in the relationship, in the trade and economics relationship. And I think the 800 million can be easily doubled and tripled and can reach as the ambassador said, uh, 2 billion, um, if not more. Uh, and as we know very well, just to reemphasize uh, what brings trade ties closer and volumes increasing over the years is um, visitations, uh, flights, connectivity. Um, that is very important. And the fact that there is now a direct flight and more will follow soon, is excellent for the relationship and for commercial ties between the two countries. Um, I think it was very well said. I will reiterate that uh, agriculture is very important to Saudi Arabia's uh, view of the Ukraine-Saudi relationship. 
Um, the ambassador mentioned very well the investment in 2018 of Salik. Salik is at the core of um, Saudi Arabia's food security policy. They have invested money outside in agricultural land in order to increase food security for the kingdom, Ukraine being a very important strategic country um, for Salik. Um, I think that uh, is going to be on the uptrend. You will see an increase in such investments. And I do believe that Ukraine has a lot to offer in agricultural technology uh, and also particularly barley um, and other grains. Uh, this is at the core of Saudi Arabia's demand uh, dynamics. Um, what was not mentioned, and I'm going through the list of items um, that, uh, that I, I went through to define their relationship, and I think there were many of them were mentioned. Um, one of the things that were not mentioned is the agreement between Saudi Aramco and the uh, Ukrainian company, or the Ukrainian company for industry and energy, um, specializing um, in, um, in, uh, in the tourism sector and hotels, which is very important. Um, that is at the principle of Saudi Arabia's strategy. And um, I think this is uh, something that Saudi Arabia will be looking for uh, in, in that uh, bilateral relationship. Uh, the know-how and the talent that was acquired in the tourism sector, but also more so in industry and energy. Uh, describing the, the agreement between Aramco and uh, the Ukrainian company for industry and energy. Um, I think it is, it is very important that um, uh, Ukraine looks at the factors that Saudi Arabia wants to build over the next 10 to 15 years to realize its vision. And if I may say so, Mr. Ambassador, um, you need to identify beyond uh, what was said beyond agriculture, which is an obvious, and what Dr. Abdelaziz said in the military industrial field. Um, that is uh, something that is quite uh, understandable. Saudi Arabia would like to build its domestic military industry. You, Ambassador, mentioned um, uh, this 2016 2017 agreement to build um, uh, a vehicle, an um, air, aircraft um, uh, manned facility. Uh, that is very important. But more so, I would say, beyond these uh, known factors, uh, military, agriculture, uh, and tourism, I would go and urge you to look at beyond these uh, elements and look at what makes the principles of uh, Vision 2030 at the core of Saudi Arabia. And I think what the core is, is very much in the services sector. It's very much in areas um, like industry, Ukraine for a long time has built capacity in industry. Now it's trying to uh, look into the micro industries, uh, technology being one of them. Um, Saudi Arabia wants to build its technology capacity um, and Ukraine has a lot of human capital and Saudi Arabia wants to build on that human capital. Um, I think also we need to look at education. We need to look at scientific links. Uh, that is quite important. Um, and you do have a lot, of, a lot of experience in the field of uh, nuclear technology um, uh, that uh, could potentially be of interest. Um, again, there are many ways beyond the two or three that were mentioned and are highlighted that could be looked at. So the two billion is attainable uh, in the foreseeable years. I think that if one is to see what Saudi Arabia wants to do, a very ambitious but very reachable strategy, uh, then one could see where Ukraine could come in and help. Um, and it's very much within this leadership role that Saudi Arabia plays, uh, leading the Islamic Muslim world, uh, but not just in the field of culture and religion, but more so as well in the field of innovation, research and development. Um, this is all I want to say, Victor. Thank you very much for giving me the chance. And I want to thank you and the GRC for organizing this. Thank you. Yes, thanks a lot, Dr. John. I share your point of view. I share the optimism. I hope that the target of 2 billion is not a total aim, but it's going to be more with the flow of time. So the main goal of us is the 
research institutions is to give impetus, so to give uh, proof to decision makers that this direction should be prioritized and to add so that what, you, what you said. I also support the idea that the cooperation scheme between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Ukraine should not be just boiled down to the traditional industries like petrochemicals and agriculture. We have more, so we have IT specialists, we have Saudi Arabia Vision 2030 is a transformation strategy, for example, as you, as you mentioned, nuclear energy. Uh, more of 52% of Ukrainian electricity is generated um, thanks to our nuclear power plants. And we have uh, lots of experience, right? The, and also the IT clusters. So, for example, the uh, citizens of the Republic of Belarus are not going to Ukraine, so to develop as Ukraine as Eastern European IT hub. So, I guess these opportunities are immense. And uh, I will pass the floor to my colleague Irina, who will like, complement all the, what has been said uh, today. I will give of Ukrainian vision how is this the relations between the you know, Saudi Arabia and Ukraine should be should uh, should develop so, uh, what which policies should be adapted and so on and so on so madam Irina the police has seen your follow recent and cadastra please have your floor uh, thank you mr Victor first of all thank you for everyone for joining our discussion today a lot has already been said and as mr Victor said I will try to give you the Ukrainian vision of the prospects of Ukrainian-Saudi cooperation. Uh, first of all, at the beginning, it was already said that Ukraine is currently working on um, making its own strategy uh, in Asia. But I would say that for Ukraine um, today, it is necessary not only to make its own strategy in the broader Asian region, but it is necessary to create its own strategy in the Middle East region. And of course, Saudi Arabia should take the one of the central places, if not the, the central place uh, in this Middle East strategy. And of course, we need to look beyond the traditional fields of cooperation. And I would like to note uh, only some of these possible fields. Of course, uh, what has already been said about agriculture and aircraft and technology development and so on and so on. Uh, first of all, in my opinion, as a political scientist, um, I would say that it is necessary for us to bring up the level of uh, our relations to the strategic partnership level, and it should be uh, added to the uh, higher level communications between our authorities. Uh, as Mr. Victor probably has already noted today, uh, President Zelensky should make a visit to Saudi Arabia. And I know that already there was an invitation for the king of Saudi Arabia to visit Ukraine in the future, of course, after the pandemic. We understand that today the online communication is a priority. But even if um, we view it as an online communication, our leaders should try to uh, stay in permanent contact and to uh, develop this higher level dialogue uh, in order to develop further our relations. Uh, also, um, as you probably know, uh, Ukraine recently created what is called the Crimean platform, and it is um, uh, it is of vital importance for Ukraine uh, that Saudi Arabia, as one of the biggest Islamic country, countries of the world, to join this format of cooperation and the support of Saudi Arabia uh, is of great importance to Ukraine nowadays uh, because of the um, situation that our country is in and uh, the Saudi Arabia support is important for Ukraine because uh, of the relations we have nowadays with the Russian Federation. Uh, if we talk about um, economic relations more specifically, I don't want to repeat the agricultural and aircraft and so on and so on. Uh, in my opinion, technical cooperation should be uh, one of our priorities for example, um, Ukraine is one of the leaders in space technologies, and I think that Ukraine has a lot to offer in this, uh, in this field for Saudi Arabia as one of the countries which is interested in um, space, uh, in space um, research and development in this 
uh, field and bilateral cooperation in uh, space exploration can be one of the fields where um, we can work together in the future. Uh, also, we, all, we have already mentioned the military technical cooperation between our countries and I want to um, uh, say further that uh, not only the, um, mm, the trade in this field is important for Ukraine and for Saudi Arabia as well, but also our countries might think about the joint uh, training and the exchange of experience between our countries. And uh, I know that it is one of the key points in the uh, strategy that our country is trying to build for the Middle East, but it is not yet specified. Uh, however, uh, it should be specified in the future and the contacts between the uh, ministers of defense of the two countries uh, should be established and uh, should be made closer in order for this uh, cooperation to be made possible. Uh, and last but not least, um, it has already been said that our countries should first of all uh, learn more about each other in order to build these bridges between our societies in order to maybe ruin some negative stereotypes about the societies and it is also important for Ukraine uh, so that our culture and our country is uh, more well known in the world uh, and tourism should be one of the um, key aspects in this uh, field and we are not only talking about the recreational tourism which of course is important but also about the educational tourism the scientific cooperation and uh, maybe in the future about the medical tourism as well as one of the possible fields of establishing relations between our two nations. And to sum up, uh, in my opinion, there are two main uh, points which should be improved in order for our countries to develop our cooperation. First is to uh, establish closer uh, ties on um, higher level between um, our uh, authorities and the second one uh, in order to facilitate the development of uh, economic cooperation there should be uh, more um, agreements uh, in first place about the uh, investments um, for both Ukrainian and Saudi Arabia side in order for uh, our countries to be able to cooperate more in the future. Uh, thank you once again. That was all that I wanted to say today. Thanks a lot, can, Madam. Yeah. Can I add something? Because yeah, uh, sure. Come this on. was my mistake uh, earlier because I maybe, first of all, I must mention that we have a uh, good base for uh, bilateral agreements between Ukraine and Saudi Arabia. What is this agreement? This is uh, good grounds for uh, bilateral cooperation in uh, economy, investment, and other fields. For example, we have uh, basic agreements uh, of uh, agreement between the government of Ukraine and Saudi Arabia on trade, economic, scientific, technical, investment cooperation. It's a basic agreement. Uh, in the course of this agreement, we established a joint uh, governmental uh, committee. Uh, we've got six sessions of this committee, and uh, I think this year, uh, seventh session uh, is uh, to be held in Riyadh in the second half of this year. Uh, this committee like a mechanism to uh, determine uh, the ways and tools for economic and trade cooperation. Uh, we have also agreement on uh, uh, double taxation. It's important agreement in line of uh, rights uh, of investors. We, we have a memorandum of investment cooperation in the field of agriculture. Uh, it's also important memorandum because uh, it promotes investment activities uh, in, very, in this sphere. And in accordance with this memorandum, uh, the, our sites created a uh, joint working group on the cooperation in agricultural sphere. Uh, as well, we have a memorandum of understanding between uh, 
Ukraine Forum and Saudi Press Agency uh, memorandum uh, of cooperation uh, between uh, in, in the field of sport. Uh, we have uh, agreement on uh, cooperation in uh, air accidents. In air accident, accidents, we have agreement uh, of cooperation in the field uh, in this field of defense. As well, uh, now we can uh, we are working on uh, different uh, international documents to be signed uh, soon. I think this is uh, agreement on cooperation in the field of uh, new renewable energy, uh, in the field migra of migration, uh, uh, lifting visa requirements for holders of diplomatic service and uh, special passports, uh, uh, technical program between uh, Saudi organiza organization for organization for stand standards and Ministry of Economy of Ukraine on metrology and standardization, uh, and other, other documents. I think approximately it will be maybe 10 documents, more documents uh, will be ready to sign uh, very, very soon. This is about uh, our uh, bilateral uh, agreements between Ukraine and Saudi Arabia. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Vadim. Thanks, Madam Irina, for your commentary. So I hope uh, pretty soon, so in the future, we will make uh, one more panel, hopefully, with regard to a future free trade deal uh, agreement between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Ukraine. One day, I hope that our uh, nations and the trade between our nation will reach such a level. And also to add uh, to the, what Manu Marina has already mentioned, as for the space uh, cooperation, I need to remind uh, that Ukraine is home to the many famous uh, Ukrainian scientists, space scientists like Mr. Kovalev, Sergei Kovalev, uh, Kovalev, Kovalev, uh, Kovalev, sorry. So Sergei Kovalev and even the Elon Musk, you know, the, the CEO of SpaceX has praised Mr. Kovalev on his Twitter. So the, uh, Mr. Kovalev was one of the most famous uh, Ukrainian uh, rocket scientist, rocket engineer in the Soviet time. And he was involved in the launch of the first human being, Mr. Gagarin, into space. So Ukraine has a lot to offer when it comes to also space cooperation. And this track is also, may also be further developed. So and and at Astra we also have space expert Mr. Borzenko, and I'm sure he would like to join any efforts and cooperation with the space tech. Yes. So uh, I will then uh, would like to invite uh, the next speaker. So the Mr. Uh, Dr. Christian Koch, director of research of the Gulf Research Center. So Mr. Koch, please. So is yours, uh, let us know about your thoughts, perspectives, vision about what already have been said and the whole vision and strategy of uh, relations between Ukraine and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, thank you, Victor. And uh, it's great to see this cooperation between uh, your institute at Astra and the Gulf Research Center. Uh, I think this is absolutely essential if we're able to uh, provide a more common analysis and, and, and bring about a sense of shared analysis. Now, if Dr. John was complaining about being the third speaker and having taken all his ideas away, I'm coming in in the fifth position. So I've heard even, even uh, more better suggestions coming up uh, from both Dr. John and from Irina. Um, but I think overall, uh, it's also definitely important to look at the many changes that are occurring. Uh, on the international scene, both in the political strategic sense and then, of course, on the economic side. Uh, I'm coming from the background of international relations. Um, I think that what we're seeing also are uh, significant shifts in the international system. Uh, and the whole Black Sea region, of course, which is of primary importance also, of course, for the Ukraine, is one area that we're going to be focused on a lot more in, in the near future. Uh, because I see here competition in the Black Sea uh, also intensifying, given its absolutely uh, central location as a corridor for trade, uh, for energy routes, uh, even for, for geo geopolitical ambitions. Uh, and this, of course, ties together uh, both the adjoining countries uh, to the Black Seas, 
but also to the wider neighborhood. Uh, and it's an integral part of, of, of if you're looking at China uh, and uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, it's important to, to countries like Turkey, uh, as it also tries to uh, get a little sense of energy independence. So I think to have you know, a little bit more of an exchange, even at the think tank level, on many of these strategic issues and to better understand what these shifts actually mean for the overall geopolitical scene, I think is an important element. Um, the GRC has been part of a larger study group that was put together by the Bertelsmann Foundation in Germany, looking at uh, the uh, implications in uh, the EU's neighborhood of policies being pursued by countries like Russia, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Iran as being considered for very important countries outside of the direct EU neighborhood. Uh, and we just, uh, last year, we actually just published a larger uh, study uh, on uh, the geopolitical ambitions in the Black Sea and Caspian regions, looking at all the various dimensions and then looking specifically at the role that countries like Russia, Turkey, Iran, and Saudi Arabia play and what impact that has on the uh, EU neighborhood strategy. Uh, and I'm happy, uh, I'll post the link in a minute in the chat so everybody can have an access uh, uh, to this study. Uh, but definitely uh, it clearly lays out many of the, the, the changes occurring um, and also possibilities of where one can uh, increase uh, better policy prescriptions. Uh, there's a whole section on also uh, how to increase Ukraine's resilience. Uh, and here, when we're talking about relations between Saudi Arabia and Ukraine, uh, two major aspects are simply, and they've already been mentioned in the way, is, of course, uh, uh, port infrastructure is absolutely essential uh, to have, uh, because we need to have uh, the, 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 the capabilities in place in order to move goods across. Uh, so uh, this is certainly one way also in which we can have a link up actually between Saudi Arabia, Europe, and Ukraine. Uh, you know, the Ukraine is a part of the EU's uh, eastern neighborhood. Uh, at the same time, Saudi Arabia has a great relations to Europe uh, in line of the EU GCC cooperation agreement, and as well as bilateral Saudi uh, Europe relations. So here, um, I think there can be a lot of emphasis can be given to probably also joint projects, uh, because I think the Europe, of course, has just as Saudi Arabia have an intense interest also in the security of this region, as well as in, 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 in the territorial integrity of, of, of Ukraine. Uh, another uh, area is also, uh, is simply the waterway infrastructure inside the Ukraine of the Dnieper River going down to the Black Sea, because this would facilitate trade uh, access and trade routes. Uh, so those are two things that I think are, are, are absolutely uh, essential to look at. Um, I mean, overall, again, it's, it's, it's a sense of uh, having uh, a, a specialist exchanges to that we can provide specific ideas on projects. I can only underscore John's emphasis on we shouldn't just limit ourselves to thinking of, you know, traditional areas of where relations already exist, but we definitely must expand and consider new areas. The world is changing rapidly and, and, and quicker than ever. Uh, we're just coming out of a one and a half year pandemic that at the beginning of 2020, nobody thought uh, could, could happen, really. It was, it was out there, but nobody thought of the impact this would have. And as a result, we've got tremendous impacts in terms of uh, uh, consequences for global supply chains, rethinking the whole supply chain infrastructure around. Uh, we have the new topics of health resilience, uh, and, and health sector uh, being absolutely essential and having climbed up the ladder of important projects. Uh, and, the, and beyond that, we have, of course, this is the traditional energy projects, but we also need to think increasingly about economic and ecological sustainability. Climate change is also an issue that's huge on the agenda. The Gulf states, Saudi Arabia in particular, are making tremendous efforts uh, also in terms of their diversification to more clean energy. Uh, and I think that's another area in which the two sides can, can uh, definitely uh, outline their perspectives and, and seek greater cooperation. 
there are a whole variety here of new areas that we need to think about. Both sides are looking into developing more innovative strategies, looking into more technological innovation, building up the human capacities. And I think there are tremendous uh, prospects here that we just need to put the, the thinking caps on of the two sides and encourage as much cooperation between institutions, between facilities. Uh, as we mentioned already, education, training are, are two elements that are important. Uh, and if we, if we do that sort of in a systematic approach, I think we can have a lot of uh, a tremendous progress for both sides. So uh, I'll leave it at that uh, and thank you again. I think it's been, a, it's been a great exchange and I look forward to continuing uh, these kinds of uh, exchanges. Yep. Sure. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Koch. So I remind Dr. Christian Koch, Director of Research at Kauf, which is then that was uh, holding his speech right now. Uh, we will remind all of the speeches and all of the audience following us on Facebook and on Zoom and other social media platforms. And afterwards, after this discussion, in, in a few weeks, in a week, uh, a joint paper of two research institutions between the highly esteemed Gulf Research Center and between ADESTA will be published uh, on Saudi Arabia Ukraine relations to be further transmitted to decision makers, to embassies as well. So, as you may see in the chat, Dr. Christian Koch has also submitted the research about uh, which he was talking on. Yes, yeah, so unfortunately, I was uh, informed by the office uh, that unfortunately, His Excellency Mohammed bin Suleiman Mohammed Anushe, Ambassador the Extra Extraordinary Plenipotentiary of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to Ukraine, can't join our discussion. So we understand this fact, ambassadors have a lot to do it, the uh, wealth of diplomacy requires, may require some force majeure circumstances, but uh, the office and the Mr. Ambassador himself shows the willingness to join, that testifies the fact that both sides are interested in the exchange of ideas and are interested in the deepening of cooperation. And I uh, hope and I think so, and I'm sure of the fact that the cooperation will be on the track of the development and so our joint paper between the Gulf Research Center and Adesta will be also a small contribution towards the whole uh, reconstruction and development of the ideas and, and of the relations between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Ukraine. Yeah, so on this time and this point, I would like to end our discussion. I will give the final speech to the speakers uh, as well. And afterwards, we'll end. So please, I, I, as much as far as we say, Dr. Abelaziz, please, you wanted to say something. Well, again, I'd like to thank you and thank His Excellency the Ambassador. It is unfortunately Saudi Ambassador was not able to join us because of urgent matters. However, uh, I'd like to thank your colleagues and my colleagues, you know, for uh, presenting some of the thoughts and idea. And I'm sure uh, this is a good start, and we really hope that we both can contribute to strengthening the relation, whether it's economical or political, and bring a better understanding and give some more, uh, you know, policy suggestion from both side to both, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, side that really can help to enhance the relation and make it stronger. So, thank you very much, and look forward to for our future also collaboration. Hopefully more in physical, you know, physically that you are able to visit you and you are able to visit us and to uh, continue our dialogue. Yes. Thank you very much for everybody. Sure, 100%, always waiting for you in Kiev, in Ukraine. Yes, so I'd like to thank all of the speakers and of the audience following us on Facebook and Zoom and other social media platforms. I would remind that we have been hosting His Excellency Ambassador of the Kingdom of, of Ukraine to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Mr. Vakosho Vadim, Mr. Vadim. Uh, yes, yeah, so... Uh, uh, we have been featuring Madam Irina Zapodiska from our Sindic, senior fellow of Sindic Cadastro from Ukraine. From the Saudi side, from the Gulf Research Center, we have been featuring three speakers. So Dr. Blaziz Zaga, chairman of Gulf Research Center, Dr. John Svakiyankis, a program director and economic research chief economist, and Dr. Christian Koch, director of research at Gulf Research Center. 
So yeah, I, I think at this point we may, may, we may end our fruitful discussion. Mm -hmm. The recording will be uploaded in YouTube and very soon, and then it will be released on the social media platforms and the web pages of both Golf DC Center and Adesta. And I guess that we have remained the first step and the first the cooperation actions to be taken will be made as well. And I hope that the cooperation as between Gulf Research Center and Odessa, as between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Ukraine, we also develop progressively and develop in the world. Yes. So thanks a lot for all of you. Thanks. Thank you. And goodbye. Yeah. Bye. At this time, I will end our discussion. Have a nice day and take care of uh, all of you in these strange COVID times. Bye.